It's finally here. Payday 2's final weapon DLC. We've come a long way from assault rifles and pistols, haven't we? But enough about the past. The McShea weapon pack 4 is here. And with it comes three new primary weapons. I would have preferred a new secondary, but hey, I can't argue with overkill. So, let's find out if these three are worthy of being the cherry atop this lead spearing cake. Our first weapon is the final sniper rifle, modelled after Great Britain's most popular export, a weapon that's haunted the minds of terrorists for many years and was made by three people in a shed, the Amarok 900. Based off the Accuracy International Arctic Warfare, a weapon made infamous by Counter-Strike's AWP, the Amarok has taken the crown as the second most powerful payday sniper, only a few months after the Iran released. Womp womp. Still though, surprised it took them this long to add one of these, but oh boy was that weight worth it. Packing an impressive 1050 damage, and being able to hit 100 accuracy with very little mods, sets this thing up for destruction. Even more so with its exclusive sets. The first of which is the Dragon Lore, the legendary CSGO skin that costs an arm and a leg. This set takes a hit at your magazine and concealment, but increases everything else, even putting your damage into overdrive. The slight increase to total ammo and the rate of fire aren't too much, but it's a satisfying beast to use in combat. The second is the Badlands, clearly based off the cel shaded art style of the Borderlands series. Although the symbol on the side looks like the logo of Face Punch, the developers of Gary's Mod and Rust, which makes sense since the latter has an Arctic Warfare, the L96. Any Rust players watching, let me know if there's a skin that looks like this. The set tanks damage by 210 points and hits the accuracy, but to be honest the latter can be counteracted with scale investment and modifications. The upsides are a boost to stability and a whole clip in reserve. Not bad, I might use this for aesthetics. Finally, for the base variant, having options for a long barrel and short barrel, a muzzle brake or a suppressor, a new faster bolt, a shell rack, which increases total ammo or a slight hit to your stats, a speed pull mag, and a stock. The pack also includes a new sniper scope, which can magnify from a 4.5x zoom to a 10 times zoom, if that thing tickles your fancy. Overall, the Amarak is a satisfying weapon, but the main problem is adding yet another sniper rifle to Payday's arsenal when they're already the best weapon class. Like, it's a possible upgrade to the Thanatos, but even then it's still a really neat gun. The Amarok is your ace in the hole if you need to prove that there ain't no rest for the wicked. The next weapon is a shotgun. A bit sad it's not a secondary, but then again another shotgun's always a good pick. The second weapon stolen from the counter-terrorist locker room, the Deimos. Based on the Benelli Nova, the Demos is a unique in the world of payday shotguns, as it can switch from pump action to semi-automatic firing. Honestly, if they use this in payday 3 for something like a SPAS-12, this could work. The interesting part is that it's the same damage tier as the Rheinfeld, but with semi-auto firing. Meaning, and I'm just saying this, meaning that this is now the king of tube-fed semi-auto shotguns, which there wasn't really many to begin with. Although, that begs a question, why would you have a switch to begin with? Hmm. Let me check something. Nope, just a gimmick. What a shame. To the gun itself. It has only one exclusive skin, the flatline, which looks pretty cool, even if I don't know if it's supposed to be based on anything. It lowers the damage, but increases total ammo, stability, and concealment, and lowers accuracy, so it's standard shotgun stuff. It even has an ammo counter on the side, although it counts up to 7 even though it only has 5 shells in the tube. Not too bad. Stylish too. Mod wise, it's your standard shotgun affair. Barrels, grips, mag increase, stocks, and a shell rack. Yeah, nothing exciting to be honest, but it doesn't need to be. 
especially with that silky smooth reload. The Demos, for when you need to strike dread and terror into your opponents. Next is an interesting one, and is another prototype gun that snuck into Payday 2. Hail to the King, it's the Campbell 74. The Campbell is based on the Knight's Armament Company Chainsaw, as in capital S-A-W. It's a prototype variant of the Knight's Armament Stoner 96. This weapon is... It's something, alright. It's the weakest LMG in Payday, but has... A high ammo to compensate? No, not really. One set, like the Demos, the Offworld which absolutely tanks the damage in exchange for ammo and concealment. I don't like it. I'm just going to say that. Like, seriously, 29 damage? Seriously? I'm guessing this is made for Grinder, but why do that? Why make a really cool weapon specifically for one deck? At least make it for, like, a class of weapon? I mean, at least the ammo is high, but Almir's beard this set balls flat. The default one is no better. The fact that the laser is misaligned to the center of the screen really bursts my buttons. And the flamethrower is just... I don't like flamethrowers. The only cool thing I can say about this weapon is the fact that it's full of horror references. Don't believe me? Well, let me just go through them. It's named after Bruce Campbell, who played Ash Williams in the Evil Dead series. The Raimi suppressor is clearly supposed to be Sam Raimi, the director of Evil Dead. The Dorif muzzle is named after Brad Dorif, the actor of Chucky from the Child's Play series. The Lugosi and Karloff barrels are named after Bella Lugosi and Boris Karloff, the actors of classic Universal Monsters Dracula and Frankenstein's Monster respectively. The Mosley sling is Bill Mosley, Chop Top from Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Otis Driftwood from Rob Zombie's Firefly film trilogy. Also Luigi Largo from Repo the Genetic Opera. And the Perkins soft case is Anthony Perkins, who played Norman Bates in the original Psycho. It's a shame this weapon sucks. The men and women at Overkill clearly did their research. So, what do I think of the Mixia weapon pack number 4? Well, as a weapon pack, it's alright. It's got some good ideas here and there, but overall nothing special. Which is what I don't like. This is the final weapon pack Payday 2 will ever get. And it's not going out with a like, make the demos armor piercing or something. Like, make something spacey. Wait. Wait, it was? It was before launch. Oh, at least I got with the rodeo and that was a complete accident, but what's this weapon's excuse? Well, only two good weapons and a mediocre one. That's just sad. And with all that, I give the McShea Weapon Pack number 4 a 5 out of 10. It would have been an 8 if this wasn't the end. Good night, my sweet prince.